and probably I'm going to just duplicate it one more time and this will be probably just uh, just right to the left uh, foreground building so I'm just duplicate it uh, control and D and just place it right next to the wall and now can duplicate away some more grass uh, pieces not too much and that seems fine so the last part now is going to be rendering and compositing so let's start uh, preparing the scene as you know uh, we've created a physical sun sky for indirect illumination just for testing purposes on the textures so we won't uh, need we don't need to create anything um, more than this but we can tweak several things with the um, or the physical sun sky uh, one of those will be the ground color um, it creates a little bit more warm feeling for the whole of the scene again it's not necessary because everything will be tweaked inside photoshop as far as the colors go and one more thing that we're going to do is to select the um, sun shape so this is the main light that is illuminating the scene and in the top view make sure that you are turning by world orientation mode you can hold control shift and right click just to select that so this way we can rotate the light and change the angle of the shadow so this tweak if we render again just saving to see the difference and if you render I'm just going to bring down the quality so it renders faster now let's render and you can see the difference between the two scenes the new one feels much better because it casts more shadows into the view of the camera so the whole scene feels much better and looks much better so for the production quality let's bump up the samples to 4 and also let's um, the preset that I'm using now it's the HD one is going to turn on the resolution to 100% in, in the common tab you can see that I'm rendering in HD resolution 1280 by 720 so I'm just going to render camera to render the scene from the render camera so this is the final scene so now we can save the image as a target format just call it render so this is our final scene but we need to create one more renderer so this will be the ambient occlusion pass that will help us bring down the bring some details shadow details when we compose the two together inside photoshop so to do that uh, the ambient occlusion pass i'm going to just select all the geometry by going to edit select by type geometry also make sure that you save a different version of the file because this will destroy all the lights materials I'm going to assign a new material to all the geometry so this will be a surface surface uh, shader in the out color I'm going to choose a MIM uh, mental ray texture which is called MIP Amp Occlusion so this is will give our uh, ambient occlusion so I'm just creating the samples bumping them to 128 and also the max distance to 1 the max distance depends on the size of your scene so 1 means 1 Maya unit will be the distance of the uh, ambient occlusion but that also depends on the fall off which is 1 at the moment also we don't need the physical sun sky so I'm going to delay that 
so that's why you need to save the scene before that and now I'm going to render the ambient occlusion pass so this is the pass it renders much faster than the uh, diffuse one so just I want to save it again as a target just a different name and now the final step is going to Photoshop so here both files open inside Photoshop and they are pretty easy to composite all you need to do is bring up the ambient occlusion pass inside the on top of the diffuse one so I'm just doing um, just creating a mask for the diffuse one if you saw the uh, the scene comes with the alpha that's on the sky which comes um, very handy when, it, uh, when it's time to play some new sky that you're going to do later but now let's just bring the ambient occlusion pass on top of the our renderer and also now I'm going to create a mask for the ambient occlusion pass as well and one final thing and now all we need to do is change the blending mode of the ambient occlusion pass to multiply and now you can see the difference with and without ambient occlusion pass you can see how the ambient occlusion brings up details in the shadows uh, by that I mean it brings more shadows and now uh, here is the clouds that, that are going to use for the sky so just place it beneath all of the all of the passes I'm just, I'm just going to scale down to match the whole scene It seems fine. So now, what I'm going to do is to merge. Um, just try to first to tweak the ambient occlusion pass. Most of the time, it won't be necessary to be on a hundred percent passage. So just I'm going to see how it looks with eighty-five percent and with hundred percent. I'm just going to select between one of the two but most of the time it's better to tune down the ambient occlusion so finally I'm merging those two together and uh, merging the diffuse and ambient occlusion pass and finally merging the, the combined two passes with the sky and creating the final scene so it's not over, we need to um, create the color correction of the scene. So I'm using the curves, uh, the shortcut is Ctrl M, just trying to darken up the scene. And I'm going to do uh, this thing one more time but with uh, adjustment layer. So I'm go just going to create a new adjustment layer with curves and select the auto option on them. This will crush the, um, the blacks a little bit further. and overall creates a more nice feeling to the scene as a whole or warm feeling as you can see the sky is now much warmer so this is the final image that we've created so I've gone over many different techniques inside of Maya for creating high poly, low poly models for texturing uh, the external environment inside of Maya so in this tutorial I'll try to bring you different techniques not only for a certain field, but for many different ones. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this series of tutorials. And I hope you learned some new techniques uh, with watching these uh, videos. And I hope you see you next time with some new uh, and exciting tutorials. So, until...